Into that third quarter, second second night, that end stretch of the third quarter uh, made a pretty big difference. Um, what happened there during that stretch? Okay. I didn't think it was just the end of the third. Um, I thought it was the stretch in the first half. Maybe I don't remember the exact time. It's maybe the start of the second, um, where we just had lapses. And so I told the team after the game, I said, you know, to be a great team, um, be a good team. You can't do a lot of hard work and get yourself a cushion and then turn around and just give it back because of lack of focus or um, lack of execution. You know, we're not a good enough team to just have three or four minutes where we just lose our minds. Um, and, you know, you undo a lot of hard work and then you got to re work really hard to get back in the game. Um, we just can't, we can't have a stretch in each half where it's a struggle. What was the explanation on where Helena was going to the free throw line, but it was a challenge, and all of a sudden, you know, they gave the ball to Lane Steve. I guess they won the challenge. And they won the challenge. Um, I saw the Minnesota entire team signal for a jump ball, and then they said it wasn't a jump ball, and that um, the ball bobbled, and Minnesota had immediate possession. That was the explanation I got. Well, Minnesota's entire team asked for a jump ball, so – I assume that when they didn't get the foul call that it was going to be a jump ball, but the referee said no because the ball bobbled or came out of her hands, and so it wasn't a jump ball, and Minnesota had possession. Just a good play by Tiffany at the end there. Yeah, honestly, I was pretty blocked off. It looked like Slim got the first one, and then maybe he fell right back in her hands. I was a little screened off by bodies in the way, but um, she got a step on us. We were, you know, they had, I think, uh, McBride on the backside, and we looked like we were pretty locked into that, but she just got half a step and the ball bounced right back in her hands. It looked like. Yep. What were you, were you looking for on the play before that where Slim hit the three? What were you looking for? Was that what you were targeting? Well, we had Ariel coming out off of Elena on the one side, but I honestly don't know where Slim's defender was. Um, I don't, I, she just seemed very open. So I, I, I kind of got to see it back because I don't know. Uh, I don't know how she ended up that open. What did you see from Myesha in, in her minutes? Uh, energy, rust, a um, couple good bursts, and somebody needs to get their game rhythm back. Like you were trying to maybe make her more of a facilitator that we had seen before from her the second time she checked in, um, or was that just a factor of lineups? I think just lineups and, you know, what we had in the flow. Um I didn't have any specific direction to her the second time she was in. Last thing for me, uh, 30 points off turnovers tonight um, compared to 11 last night. What was the biggest difference there? Um, I mean, it's 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 a tough game a little bit to evaluate because we did a lot of things that you would like to see us do. I thought we did a reasonable job on them on the boards. I thought we forced turnovers and converted. Um, gave up, you know, too many threes to their good shooters. But um, just like I said, just a couple bad stretches, and all of a sudden we're playing, uh, we're going uphill the rest of the game. When it comes to Maisha, how do you see her fit in as a whole as a team with this group that you guys have together? I mean, I think she's somebody who can play with either of our starting bigs, um, and and also maybe at some point we'll get to some big lineups. You know, probably. Uh, just kind of the minutes is going to be tough to do that for a little while, but um, I think she's at her best and we're at her best with her when she can be aggressive when the opportunity is there, but also facilitate and get us playing side to side and set up our teammates by being a great screener and, um, you know, getting into two, two player actions with her guards. Um, and then, you know, defending and rebounding is always her bread and butter. If she's, uh, you know, if she's getting good rebounds for her minutes played, that generally means that our transition is going too. Your perspective did you see the back to back being a factor at all nope our our ones that played uh heavy minutes were all pluses tonight so i wouldn't say so coach they say it's a marathon not a sprint you look at these first couple of games is this getting acclimated um no to, uh, training camp? nope these games count the same i mean you know it's there's some things like getting my isha worked in People were at different places coming out of camp, but game six, you know, that didn't that didn't feel like a get acclimated game. That felt like a game that we gave back. And Minnesota, to their credit, um, as we knew, were a desperate team and played really well. And their best players stepped up big. I want to ask from just between the lines and get my drift. 
It seemed like sometimes it was six verse five, seven verse five. How mm -mm. do you kind of stay locked in? Mm -mm, not taking that bait. Anyway. Not taking that bait. Did you see Ariel, um, you know, build on last night at all? I mean, another 15 points, I think it was tonight. Yep. Um, 18, actually. How about oh, did she? Yeah. She, uh, yeah, clearly, I mean, we all, we said it in the first few games, like, Ariel's going to make shots. She got a long track record of making shots. Um, she made some good plays out of pick and roll. She scraped herself off the floor again a few times, and, um, you know, she ends the game with five fouls. She did a good job playing with five fouls, but um, that's tough when she got – all right, I will take your bait a little bit. Zero free throws, five fouls. Okay. Um, <laughs> No, she plays. She plays through everything. So it's it's good to see her get going as we knew she would. Like the shots that you were getting tonight, like the looks that y'all got. Sometimes, sometimes. I mean, they they were sending so much help. We got some pretty open looks. You know, Tosh and Slim each hit a couple. I think they'd probably each thinking they should have hit a couple more. Um, they got those expectations for themselves. They did a good job making everything tough for Elena. We got to be a little smarter about you know how we can use her and put her in positions where it's harder for them to do that. Um, that's on me first and foremost. Any more in-person questions? I think that's it then. Thank you, Coach. All right. See you all next week. Pleasure. Eric just talked about um, long stretches where things kind of go wrong. You know, it happened again in the third quarter. It happened again yesterday. It be playing to the second quarter. What can you guys do to kind of stop having those stretches so that kind of low leads and some of the hard work that you guys have established before them? I mean, the, the easy answer is to say if we knew we would stop doing it. Um, but I think for us, it's a matter of focus right now. I mm -hmm. think that's the only thing that I can really attest it to. Um, and it's not to say we're thinking about other things. I just think we just need to lock into each other and focus on what we have going on on the court and be intentional about what we're doing in every single possession. What was the conversation in that fourth quarter as you guys make that leap run. We're confident that we could come back, but it is getting to the point where, right, those are controllable things. It doesn't come down to that last possession, that last layup. It's controllable things throughout the entirety of the game where A is talking about our focus and our intentionality and what we're doing, especially on the defensive end, can't falter. Um, right now, we're still trying to figure out our offense in half court, but we are really scary and we are really good when we get stops and we're able to run in transition. When we're not able to get stops and we're walking the ball up, we're still figuring that part of our offense out. So it just puts us in, at a disadvantage right now. We got to find some solutions for the double teams that are coming at Elena and Shakira. And we're going to get back to work and figure that out this week, but um, it is our focus right now. So Fourth quarter, we were confident. We put ourselves in the position to win. And <sighs> yeah. Just one last one for me. Speaking of that offense, the half court, um, you know, are we beyond shots not falling? You know, that was a big conversation at the beginning. Or did you, did you like the looks that you got today? Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, personally, I feel like we are getting better shots than we've been getting. It's still a matter of knocking down a shot two from seven for the three. I was five for 12, and we're still in here every single day getting shots up. So trusting the process, trying to figure it out on offense chemistry-wise, and shots are going to fall eventually, but we're getting shots that we want. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, you guys had uh, 30 points off their turnovers tonight. That's up from 11 last night. So what do you think the biggest difference was tonight in that respect, getting that number up? Probably attacking in transition. I haven't watched the film, um, but probably attacking in transition and not being so passive after a steal or after a mistake from the other team. Mm -hmm. And when our defense is good, our defense is good, and we're able to run the transition. Teams can't stay with us when we get steals and leak outs. We just have two good players. Um, when we're committed to running our lanes, running to the corners, rim running, trails, all those things consistently, that's why we're getting 30 points. And when we falter, that's when we're losing that deficit.
the material for you individually, you know, in a, a second straight game where you're shooting the ball a bit better. How are you building on on last night tonight? Um, just trying to get to the spots and being where I need to be. I'm feeling better about where I'm getting shots from. It's a conversation that we've continued to have. Um, and then just continuously shooting them. Um, it still doesn't feel the way I want it to feel. A lot of it is rattling. Um, mm -hmm. But just getting to the spots and staying confident and shooting it. Like, I'm a shooter. I got to shoot the ball when I'm open. It's part of our offense. Yep. So I'm going to keep taking them. Last thing for me, Tasha, just for you, the past two nights in particular, I've like really noticed how much you're – Attacking and scoring in the first quarter in particular. Um, has, has your mindset changed at all? Has that been a point of emphasis? Mm -hmm. For me, I need to attack early to get teams to commit to me, to not play soft on me. Um, so when I'm able to get to the basket early, they have to um, commit to me on the defensive end, which ultimately opens up what I want to do offensively, which is pass. So just being aggressive early, but um, I have to carry that mindset over to the second half, and we need to stop running so many sets in the second half and just run. Any idea where that comes from or what's taking through it? Honestly, it's it's some of it's fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is the fatigue of playing a back to back, which is not an excuse because we said that today. Rid the room of excuses. Everyone's fucking tired. The schedule sucks. We know that, and it's going to continue to suck. We continue to have back to backs. We continue to play three games in five days which is crazy, but we have to find it. We have to find our focus, and that's something that we can control. And so it's on each of us, which we've committed to each other and to this organization, that that is one of the things that we need to get better on. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, so you're going to see me, A, Della, talking a lot more just so that we're keeping everyone on the same page and, and so we can get everyone at the same intensity and intentionality and the same focus. But it needs to happen. There's no excuse for it. And Ariel, I know before these two games you talked about uh, that your shot was going to happen statistically. It was going to start though. And, and the Minnesota was giving you guys very tough looks tonight. I don't know that were easy. How much does that build your confidence with you know, what you did last night and not tonight being able to do it, but maybe more pressure in the face? Yeah. Um, to be honest, making shots is like I'm thankful for it, but I think my confidence has came from when I was missing shots and I was still locked in the shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's where I build myself up and I tell myself, like, at the end of the day, you still have to be who you are, um, regardless of what it's feeling like, regardless of what it's looking like, because I committed to them that I could be that. Um, obviously, people are going to be physical with me. That's what you do with scores. You try to push them off their block. You try to frustrate them. Um, I don't really get frustrated too much about players as much as not getting getting calls drinks. not getting calls yeah. find me i'll pay her fine Thank thanks you. Tosh. You're um welcome. but yeah so it's really just a matter of me staying locked in mentally and not worrying about what's kind of happening around me making sure i'm getting to my spots making sure i'm setting those screens and leave it up to those who will remain nameless to do what they're supposed to do to do their job hmm. Gosh, first um sorry about it you probably made a lot of people happy today but you know yeah. and today as i have an orange uh, not that, but a, question. a lot of music fans came up and said thank you for the advocacy even though we're orange for two days it's anti gun violence is a, it's a lifelong issue <laughs> just a message um for the people that this is not just a, a weekend thing this is a lifelong thing. just a message for that i think you can i think people can just feel it themselves People don't feel safe to go anywhere anymore. You don't feel safe to go to the grocery stores, to malls, to churches, to movies, anywhere. I don't feel safe even going to Target and shopping around. That's the reality of the world that we live in right now. Um, our kids don't feel safe to go to school. That's reality. Mass shootings continue to happen. 120 people die a day from senseless gun violence. Those are real life things. And until we start caring about others and our neighbors and all those things, we're going to continue to keep sending our prayers and condolences that's not enough anymore that's not enough anymore so I uh, this is not just a two-day thing it's not just a mystics dedicated to friday night game to wear orange this is an everyday fight to implement real legislation that is going to protect lives in this country so tell your representatives to stop lining their pockets with nra money and to do their fucking job that you like that i saw your head pop up Real quick, I love you. Love doing media with Tosh.
Junior MBA. Mm -hmm. uh, I just have one question. So you said you're Sorry, I just dropped the F bomb. Junior MBA. <laughs> right. You know, like, I said, oh, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, girl. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm just kind of thinking, how do you guys take those losses and still uh, incorporate them into like who you are and your skills to keep winning in the future? Um, losing happens, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. obviously you want to win every single game, but we also know that you cannot win every single game. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to take what you got better at during this game. Um, we see where we're best at in certain parts of the game, so that's what we have to carry on. And then the things that you didn't do well, you're happy that there are things that you can change personally. Um, it's not, we're a good basketball team. It's a matter of things that we need to do and take control of for ourselves. And so that's kind of how we look at it. You know, you want to take the strengths and use them and continue to lock into them, but you take those weaknesses and make sure that they're weaknesses that you can control and get better at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm the similar. I, I feel like you learn a lot in losses about yourself and who y'all are as a team and identity. And um, like I said, we we build off of really good things that we've done. And y'all, we have gotten so much better from that first game. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes can get overlooked um, when a loss happens. But um, within that, we have to be real about what our weaknesses are and how we are committed to getting better on them. Um, and that's, again, focal, focal points uh, throughout the game, um, intentionality throughout the game, and defensive um, intentionality throughout the game, too. Thank you, girl. Thank you. Oh, good. Any other in-person questions? Yeah, one more. Um, Tosh, you posted on social media a little while ago that something along the lines of uh, you don't talk enough about how much you like playing with Kara. Uh -oh. um, go ahead, ask your question. Well, I've been waiting for this. I was going to say she had a double-double tonight. You want to mm -hmm. talk about it? That baby is going to be the best five in this league. That baby growing up. That baby is growing up. She is playing as a vet in her second year. It is really exciting to see, but I take a lot of pride in Kira and the growth that she's had from last year to this year, which people don't acknowledge. If she is not the most improved player this year, y'all are tripping in this league, and it is biased because, to me, she's already won it. Um, but the, the special thing about Kira is she wants to get better. She wants to learn. She wants to be great, and when you have that in your, in your locker room, in your gym every single day, and she's willing to do whatever. She's willing to do the garbage stuff, to grab the rebounds, to protect the rim, to protect us. Um, she is learning how to play with Della and off of Della. Um, she's a special player, a special person. Um, and so she deserves her flowers. But we, she is our X Factor. I don't know who needs to hear it, but Shakira Austin is our X Factor for this team. We have greatness in A and Della and Slim and me and everyone through our roster. But we go as Shakira goes. I like That's it. Thank you. Yeah.